You are listening to Mining Stock Education, where you'll learn from the top leaders in the natural resource sector and uncover quality mining investment opportunities. In today's show, you're going to be getting an update from one of the best performing stocks that we've featured over the last 12 months. It's been about a year ago, I first interviewed Kevin Drover, the president and CEO of Arcana Corporation. The ticker symbol is AUN in Toronto and AUNFF on the OTC. And we featured this company when it was trading in the 20 cent range Canadian. And as we re- record today, it's it's about $1.25 per share. So over a five-fold gain and many of you have emailed me thanking uh, me for this recommendation. And so um, I'm glad you were able to uh, experience some of the profits that we've seen over the last year. I've had friends think I'm a genius because I recommended it, but it was actually quite obvious to me that this company was poised for future share price appreciation. Uh, The market had kind of forgotten about it and and due to some frustrations, people had kind of left it for dead. But after I met with management for two years in a row at the Beaver Creek Precious Metals Summit, every September, I could see that the company was poised for a significant rebound. And now with silver performing, uh, Arcana as a near-term, pure, high-grade silver producer, fully permitted in Colorado in the States, it's looking it's looking great. And uh, it, it seems to me that we could, we're in for another good year of share price performance, at least I hope so as an investor. So with that long introduction, Kevin, uh, congratulations on the recent share price performance and a welcome back onto the show. Thanks, Bill. Good to be here. And uh, yeah, the stock has certainly uh, you know performed quite nicely in in uh, this uh, silver bull market. And also joining me is Brian Briggs, the the COO working down there in Uri, Colorado. And if you're an avid listener and watcher of this show on YouTube, you saw my site tour video and it was Brian who brought me uh, thousands of feet into the mountain and then 14,000 feet on top of the same mountain on on a cliff that looked like something out of the Lord of the Rings movie. Uh, That was Brian. So Brian, welcome onto the show for the first time. Thanks, Bill. It's great to be here at least in podcast form, not in site tour video form. So Kevin, you have a new background. Uh, It looks like you've uh, brought the family down to Uray, right? From Vancouver? Yeah, we finally got here. Uh, All the visas finally came through in uh, late November. And uh, we made the move down here right right at the end of November, November 30th, I think we landed in uh, in Uray. So uh, we've set up camp down here and uh, we'll be here for a bit. We get ourselves into production. And, uh, you know, just to be close to uh, Brian and I can see each other every day and, and uh, you know, look at the project and it makes a big difference. Uh, so, uh, yeah, it's uh, it's good to be here. You've closed on the debt facility. That was the last press release that the company put out. And so give us an update on what you've been able to do over these last couple of months since we last spoke, please. Well, yeah, we did close the $28 million facility. Uh, You know, that took us right to about $36, $37 million with the cash we had on hand. Uh, So that's all done. Um, And uh, we've ordered virtually, uh, you know, all the long lead time items have been ordered for some time. Uh, Brian and and his uh, his group here have gotten uh, virtually everything else ordered. We have our main contractors already on site and uh, and doing uh, work. So we're in pretty good shape right now. Uh, you know, winter is here. COVID is here. Uh, we don't quite know what the effects of that might be just, uh, you know, on, on if anything, it'll be effects on the schedule. Uh, and, and that's our big concern right now. That's the big uh, unknown that we have. But certainly from our perspective, our target is still to be in production in the second quarter of 2021 of this year. That might slip depending on, you know, uh, if we do get hit with COVID or or if we have a a bad winter or whatever the case may be. But right now, uh, you know, we're, we're heading for June of 2021 for production. Brian, when I was with you for two days uh, at the mine, I mean, it was so clear that you enjoy what you do, uh, the excitement, whether it was the the morning coffee in your office or, you know, a 11 p.m. meal in the local restaurant. You just had so much excitement talking about the project. And it was clear to me as an entrepreneur that you enjoy your employees and you enjoy being around them. So, you know, what's the day to day looking like there as you build out the mine? And can you give us any updates from an operation standpoint? Well, it's busy. I can tell you that. And, you know, it's been it's been fun seeing this thing grow. I mean, we've added some really quality people. We just added our uh, our mill mill manager just started yesterday. We uh, Ian Larkins just joined us. He's got 
30 some years of experience, having a quality mill operator like Ian join us is, is just added to the fun. You know, we've we've got contractors moving materials up to the mine site. Uh, we're rebuilding the mill right now. Uh, we're we're doing a pour every single day this week on with concrete. Uh, that's a challenge, as you've seen the site. It's uh, it's remote and and it's uh, it's the middle of winter, but uh, the contractors seem to be able to get her done. So you know, we're hoping the mill will be ready for commissioning by uh, by first of May. That's kind of the schedule right now. Haven't got a hit on some unknowns. Uh, we've got 80, uh, 80 employees on site. Most of those are underground working 24-7 on the development. Uh, Mike Lee is doing a great job as general manager here. He's, he comes with a wealth of underground experience. And it's just been fun to see the team coalesce and really start moving this project forward. And, and uh, you know, COVID delays, weather delays, they're, they're, they're going to hit us. But I think Kevin's, uh, Kevin's view of of the target is June is uh, is a solid target right now, and if that slips into uh, into July because of one of these unknowns in front of us. So so be it. We've got the money in the bank, and uh, everything's been ordered. That's going to cost a lot of money. It's really about schedule now. And w- so, when you say delays, would that just be with the snow and transporting some of the sure. equipment up to the mine? You know, on average, you'll get five to ten feet of snow a year at the mine site. So. That creates a challenging environment. Uh, I would have wished we could have started construction in the middle of summer, but uh, you can't control timing. So here we are in the middle of winter and and we're gonna have delays. There's no doubt about it. We just wanna keep them to a minimum and stay on target. Okay, and we're up to, you said 80 employees, did I hear that, of the 150 at full operation? Yeah, we're about 86 right now and we've got a few more that are gonna trickle in, some warehouse people and some other uh, new employees that we're gonna need to train. Miners are fully staffed right now, so we're we're good on the miners. We just need to uh, keep them uh, keep them keep them efficient and keep them at the face. Okay, Kevin. A uh, question I had from uh, somebody was regarding hedging with with this debt facility that you just agreed to. Can you just share a little bit about what is hedged and for how long? Because a lot of retail silver speculators that are interested in the story or have invested in Arcana, they want the full upside of a, of a potentially explosive silver price. Can you please speak to this? Right. Yeah, yeah, we we as part of the uh, debt facility, we did put uh, a hedging uh, program in place, basically to cover the downside uh, to make sure our debt, uh, you know, the debt provider uh, needed that. So we're we're uh, we're covered. Uh, the facility is about three point two million silver ounces. That represents about twenty nine percent of our uh, first five years of production, first four years of production, really. Um, and, uh, but everything else is, uh, you know, free for trading kind of thing. So it's, a, I think it's about 70,000 ounces a quarter, uh, you know, which is, uh, it's not a large amount uh, by any stretch, but it's, it's a requirement as part of the loan facility to make sure we do cover our downside. And in best case scenario, and I know that you are conservative by nature, how soon could we get out of the hedge and how soon do you expect to pay back the loan? I know you have five years, but I'm sure you're not planning on extending the full five years of the loan. No, well, the loan is fully repayable after the first 12 months without penalty. So, you know, theoretically, we we could take the loan out uh, and we could take out the hedge positions uh, virtually at any time, um, you know, where when we, we would want to once we're in production kind of thing. We, we haven't decided to, you know, there, there's some issues around trying to take out the hedge productions when you get mark to market valuations and things like that. But um um, you know, we, we certainly will have the ability to do that without being penalized. Brian, are there any questions that you've been getting uh, from funds or investors that uh, have been asking you about the Arcana story at this point? Just when are you in production? That's, you know, that's, that's, the, uh, that's the key here. I mean, you know, all things considered, we, we started this mine up to put it into production and that's the only goal we have. Okay. So we're moving forward. Uh, Kevin, anything final you'd like to address or share with the market? Well, I, I think the thing to to leave with everybody right now is that, uh, you know, we we are progressing here. We're, we've got our funding in place. We're going to be in production, you know, from a, from a perspective of projects like this, you know, like tomorrow almost. It's uh, six months is a very short timeline to production. And I think, uh, you know, with the silver price, uh, you know, with the wind and the sails relative to that silver price, we, we have a, a good uh, outlook, I think, for the certainly for the next several years. Uh, and with our exploration potential on this project, 
you know, we're going to be around a very long time here. Not not just the, the feasibility, which says about seven years, but we really think that this is a 20, 30 year project that we've got. And, and of course, we still have uh, the ability to be able to consolidate the area as well. So I think we got a great future. And if you're not familiar with the Arcana story, I'll put a link in the show notes to my site tour video, and you'll be able to see firsthand as Brian takes me underground and on top of the mountains, uh, this exploration potential that Kevin referenced. This is not just a seven-year mine life. Uh, They'll drill it out and they'll continue to follow the veins. And there's numerous veins that haven't been tapped into in in the properties that Arcana has. And you can see that in the site tour video. Uh, Kevin, really appreciate the update. And Brian, thanks for coming on the show. You're welcome. Thanks, Belts, and you're welcome as well.